Paintball Nerd. Today's guest on Paintball Nerd started playing paintball in 1995. He turned pro in 2007 with Aftershock. He's also played for 187 Heat X Factor and the Ironman. And he ha- he now has a new team. Newest team. Team Aftershock. We're welcoming back Mr. Nick Slobiak. I'm back. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. Proud to be here. Long time listener. Yay. Second time caller. <laughs> Dude, so the return of Aftershock. Bum, bum, bum. Just saying it. Just saying it, right? The it's, return of aftershock. It, it's definitely something that stinks to say, because I never thought I'd ever play for another team, and um, this would be the third time I've technically played for the team. Hmm. Went pro with them. Went to Heat. Went to one eight seven. One eight seven fell apart. Went back to aftershock in twenty seventeen. Then got an offer from X Factor at the end of twenty seventeen. 2018, so played back in 2018, and then in 2018, uh, uh, Aftershock got relegated and was no longer a pro NXL team, and Renick discontinued the, the NXL team and just played Woods. Wow. So, yeah, third time's a charm, baby. <laughs> so, the team is back in extraordinary fashion. Yeah. yeah. How's it feel? How's it feel to be part of that? It feels really good because uh, there's a dynamic being brought to the team that wasn't there in when I was on the team the last two times. And that stems from Todd Adamson is the owner and the direction that he wants to go and the structure that he has outlined for, for everything. And, and now having Todd Martinez as the coach, you know, it's just, mm. uh, I got robbed back in 2020 and only had Todd as one, the coach for one tournament. And a lot of us that were part of that team in the Ironman, that whole organization, uh, Todd was a, was the cornerstone of that. He, he attracted a lot of people. He built that team with the people he wanted, and we got results in the first event. But that's what's exciting now. It's, a, it's great to be uh, it's just great to be back. I'm excited to put the jersey on for the first time. Well, it's cool too because you got. So, I mean, this, this interview is being released Sunday. And of course they've already announced Todd Martinez as the coach, a rod, LJ Parrish, Corey Hall, Thomas Kim, Silos, Clay Hughes. So, and you, Good eye. six of those dudes, won Vegas, 2020 NXL and the coach and the coach. Don't forget that guy. Yeah, I mean that's like we should, it's the one of those things that will never. I feel like there's been a lot of those in my career. I'm, I'm sure anyone can kind of pick, pull these apart and, and say that there's been a lot of those in their lives too. But <clears throat> we won that first event. We had so we had three practices together. There were two tryout practices. Uh, there was a really crazy practice against the Russians at at Victory Paintball Park in San Diego where it rained and the paint just it wasn't coming out of our guns. It, we, we didn't get what we would have liked. And uh, and then we went to Vegas, had a good practice on Thursday and, and then played the event and, and ended up winning. And then that mm. just disappeared. So like to to be able to see the group of guys again, the, at least a good chunk of the group of guys again that um, we won that event with, you know, we never would have known what could have happened in 2020 because of COVID. Even though the majority of us outside of Aaron and Thomas played at the event, uh, the World Cup that year, you know, we, we ended up losing to Aaron's team, Impact, um, on Sunday. It just wasn't the same, you know. Mm. So it's, it'll be nice to get once everything is completely good to go. It'll be nice to get the band back together again. Specifically, I think probably in the first practice, the layout practice. What do you uh, what do you have to say about stepping on the field with each one of these individuals? Let's let's start with Aaron. Uh, uh, it's you know, Aaron is <clears throat> hands down one of the best field awareness esque type players. He has a very good sense of things that are happening. He's got really good instincts. <clears throat> he knows when he can <clears throat> excuse me. He knows when he can make moves and go through holes and exploit 
weaknesses of other teams. So again, like the, the story with A-Rod for me is I, I've known him for a while um, and coming up through paintball, but I only ever got to play with him for one event it, in the mm -hmm. NXL. I did get to play with him for an event in Arizona where uh, Augie tanked Dusty Odell and we won because of that. But that's another story for another time. So uh, no, pull it now. <laughs> uh, we, we put an all-star team in tech or in Arizona and it was Dusty Odell, LJ Schwartz, Chris Osoya, A-Rod, myself, and uh, that might be it. I don't know. There might, be, there might have been one more person, but we ended up playing this open tournament. <clears throat> I think first place was like 15 grand or something. Uh, and old Scottsdale Elevation was the other pro team there. We ended up playing them in the finals, and Augie was the last guy left in the back. Or no, there was one guy left in the back center, and Augie was walking off on the B side. And if you if you know Dusty Odell, he 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 gets that opportunity to get that chainsaw going. Uh, he's gonna put it on you. And so he was running down through the middle. I was on the snake side. Uh, Schwartz was on the Drito side. And he just murdered this guy. And Augie, as he was walking up behind Dusty when this happened, said, man, that's effed up and just had his tank. Uh, this isn't an accurate representation because this is an old intimidator. But he had his tank in his forearm and he hit him with the back of the tank across the back of the head and knocked him to the ground. Dusty was okay. Uh, a lot of swell, uh, swearing and curse words and paintballs were shot immediately after that. The rest broke it all up, and then we were awarded the win because that just DQ'd the entire team. And we went. Yeah, because that's assault, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a battery. That's a, that's a lot of things. Uh, which mm. nothing happened. Dusty was okay. You know, we we took we took the trophy and the money home, and, and it all worked out. So, you know, two two tournaments with a rod. <clears throat> So not hoping that that happens again. We don't want anyone getting tanked, no. <laughs> you know, but <clears throat> I don't know. That's just, it's just the unknown with him um, to be, to be able to be his teammate and play off of the moves he makes and communicate. Like he's, he's played for a host of really good teams. He's won a lot of tournaments with those teams. He's been the, the crux of that, right. And dynasty's win in Vegas and in victories for, uh, for that team. And, so it'll be exciting. It'll be exciting to explore that opportunity and well, again play off of his moves and and then you know just be a teammate with him again. How about how about LJ Parrish? So LJ, I have a little more history with. <clears throat> we played together on the Ironman, um, and I've known him as he came up through the aftershock camp. And uh, like that'll be good to play with LJ again because LJ is like. Throughout with everybody, LJ would be the he'd be the one that like resonates the most with just being that Midwest kid with me and our upbringing and aftershock being the pinnacle of Midwest paintball and paintball in general in the world as we were coming up. There was there was no greater team. So that I'm really looking forward to. Him and I uh, we spoke today. We've spoken a lot and uh, definitely really excited about it because. LJ is a crafty, sneaky little bastard. And, yeah, he is. And he won't, you know, he, I think he might be one of the guys, not, not to say that no one really wants it on the team, but I think he really wants us bad. He wants to win with Aftershock. Like uh, between him and I, and obviously the Todds, uh, you know, those are, there's only four of us that have donned the Shock jersey before. And three of us have won wearing the Aftershock jersey, and LJ is the only one that hasn't. And so, you know, that was very high. That was actually the top three on my list when I was on the team because we were living off of things that Todd Adams and, and Todd Martinez did uh, to make that name great. And when I was coming up on the team, we'd only put a second through third place, fourth place trophy on the wall. We'd taken every place but first. So I know that weighs heavy with LJ, and I know, you know, along with everyone else on the team, winning is, is the goal. So I'm excited to see how uh, LJ embraces that and spreads the culture to everyone else yeah he he loves aftershock i i spoke with him recently and you know he tried out for aftershock twice i do i i believe so yes he wants he always wanted to be on aftershock so he says like as soon as the word came that that there was a team <clears throat> in the form called aftershock he was on board he's like what i, I gotta do i, I believe it <laughs> i believe it 
<laughs> so who else we got? Uh, Celos Cortez. Um, you know, Celos was a bit of a wild card to me when he came on the team with the Ironman in 2020. He was someone, and this is, you know, where you're going to give credit to Todd Martinez, that Todd had been paying attention to and could see the potential and yeah. really kind of worked Celos into like telling him what he needed to do, how he needed to do it. And, you know, that kind of whether, and I'm sure there were other factors that, that helped motivate Celos, but, you know, there was a big change in his work ethic, in his productivity on the field <clears throat> from 2020 through 2021 um, that saw him really blossom as, as an attacker in a very like lethal weapon on the snake side for the team. And I don't know, you know, I don't know exactly how that's kind of worked out for him when, when he, you know, he went and played with Saints for the tournament or two that they played in. Um, you know, you kind of take a back seat to other people that were put in front of him. And then <clears throat> they got a little stint on Revo and then NYX. And so he hasn't been the guy like he was on the Ironman. And I think that's something that he really craves and uh, he's been training for. So again, to to be put in that position um, or look to be put in that position is something that, you know, is really going to drive him to be the best he can be. And I don't know that any of us have seen that yet. Mm. So that'll be, that'll be nice. That'll be, uh, it should be scary for all the other people out there. <laughs> right on. Who, who else do we got? We have Zizek. Uh, am I on the team? Did I make it? If you're wearing blue. Am I the eighth? You can be the eighth. Sweet. Sign him up. Who do we have? Who do we have? Uh, Corey, Corey Hall. Hall. <clears throat> Tom Clay. Corey Hall, Corey Hall, Corey Hall. Um, so Corey Hall is like, it's interesting because I feel like I've known him for a long time. Um, and I think we've just kind of known, uh, we've known each other. Uh, hmm. he, his name was always said by Maddie a lot. And, you know, he really came into his own coming up through elevation um, and getting, when they got their pro spot and just staying alive and just playing that seven man type ball and pulling out some of the ridiculous <clears throat> and um dude he's like he wants it he wants to get after it he is a very good shot he is a very good communicator and uh he's just a guy i think that like man i don't know he's just hungry for for all of it so it's really good to, and he's a very driven individual and he doesn't he doesn't really bullshit so like you know, if he sees something, he says something and he does a good job of kind of keeping uh, everyone in check and telling people when to shut up when they need to, and then kind of mm. restructuring the conversation. And that happened a lot uh, when we were teammates together on the island for two years, or I guess a year and a quarter, because um, we didn't play much in 2020. So that'll be, it'll be good. It'll be good to have him uh, be part of the squad and to utilize uh, that tenacity that he has and the recognition that he has um, when it comes to the structure of the team. Uh, next is Thomas Kim, who I don't, I, know, I, I didn't, yeah, the pilot, I'm a pilot. I didn't get to, I didn't really get to know or like become really good teammates with Thomas because of how short the year was. I and mean, we had our practices together, but he, out of everyone, I guess him and Silos would be the two that like I had the least interactions with up to that point. And you know, Thomas had a, we had a, outside of having a good start to 2020 in Vegas and winning as a team, uh, you know, Thomas had a rough year with COVID and, and family stuff. And so he had to step away from the team and couldn't play World Cup with us. Mm. And it's like kind of bounced around. And so the, the thing I look forward to the most is just kind of reconnecting with him. We've had some really good conversations. I think he has a, a fantastic outlook on life and responsibilities and uh, order of operations, you know? And so, It'd be good to see him take that maturity and apply it to the situations that we find ourselves in yeah. throughout 2024. And let's not forget in the future, free airfare for the whole team. Right, Thomas? Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's just got to get a plane, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta get I mean, that you get one, right? They give you one when you get your, your pilot's license. They yeah, give that's you how it works. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. They charge you a bunch of money and 
They give you a, you get a brand new car, a brand new plane. Hey, come on down, Thomas Kim. Collect your new airplane. In that case, what am I doing here? We need to become a pilot. Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Time away from paintball, so it's not worth it. Oh, fair. Mm. So you, Clay Hughes is the only guy that you haven't won uh, 2020 Vegas with. Clay like Hughes? New guy. Clay Hughes technically is the, the newest. I mean, so yeah, all of us up to this point have played together and won a tournament together. Uh, and that being the 2020 Las Vegas event with the Ironman. So Clay Hughes and I played together the last two years on the Ironman. And um, dude, I tell you what, man, like he is a very smart individual, a uh, very driven individual, and he just wants to get better. And he, the way he looks at things and sees things on the field, specifically on the snake side and analyzes them and then attacks and then revises that and attacks like in a practice where you got point after point after point. It's impressive. And, you know, I think he's really going to have a lot of success under going from last year to this year under the guidance and leadership of Ty Ums and Anton Martinez. And so that's what I'm looking forward to see, you know, kill he's, he came into his own last year at towards the end of the year, really kind of did a good job of voicing his opinion to be heard because he's a smart dude. And you know, if you're the one going out there as the first attack on the snake side, you see things, you want to give that feedback to your coach. And mm. so I think, I think it'll be good. I know it'll be good. It'll be great to see that interaction between him and the coaching staff to be successful on the snake side and, you know, become a lethal weapon. Ironman only won three events last year or three events, three, <clears throat> three matches last year. And we won one of those matches because of clay because he mm. single-handedly ran down the stake side in our level matchup um, in Texas and shot four people. You know, if he didn't do that, he probably he would, he would have went to overtime or possibly lost the point and then, you know, who knows. So he took the matters into his own hands and made an amazing move. Um, so, yeah. Uh, winning three matches in a year is not good, Nick. No, no, it's not. <clears throat> it's not. It's, it's definitely not. You expecting better results with Aftershock this year? Yes, yes. There will be better I mean, results. There'll be what's a, what's like? I I consider you fairly uh, realistic, right? You're not you're not overly optimistic. You're a realist. You're not a guy that goes the glass is half empty or half full. You say the glass is twice as large as it needs to be. Or give me the glass. Let me drink all the water. Now it's empty. <laughs> just grab just give me the glass okay let me pour it out <laughs> just give me the glass you know, so what's your expectation? Out. so what's, what's the expectation for for your performance for vegas like personally Let's no see. no you're gonna do great the team oh no, well no, in that case uh you know it, i like to say and i i this makes me think of like my thoughts if you would have asked me this going into vegas in 2020 i felt good about how we were playing but i didn't feel like we would have won the tournament right oh. i just I, yeah like we it was just we didn't have good we didn't have a good practice before the event again there were, it was rainy pain didn't shoot very well like that caused some of us to be a little more agitated with others um and and so looking at things now and not to see that the, we we have not had an official practice as the team yet like there was 24 guys at the tryout a lot of people got mixed around. Uh, Arod wasn't there, and so you know, I think what what needs to happen is we just need to get together and gel and and play and get into a rhythm and build up that chemistry. And if that happens the way I I feel like I know it will, then I don't see why we can't win the first event. Yeah, like that's just you know, everyone on the team is one, save Clay. Um, but we, and, I mean, at least he's say he Clay's made it to the finals with us uh, on the Ironman. So it's it's really not a secret on what we need to do as individuals and as a team. And I mean, I feel good. This team is going to win this year. So, I mean, so it may not be Vegas, but you guys will win an event this year. Yeah, I mean, I feel like everything that's happened uh, leading up to this point. I mean, it's just kind of like it, it, Vegas is kind of ours for the taking. Like it's, I mean, I mean it's kind of silly to say, but like. Like, could you? I can't. Like, could you imagine if the group of guys that gets together that won the tournament back in 2020 gets together as aftershock, mm -hmm. as opposed to being the Ironman and wins Vegas? Mm -hmm. Like, 
<laughs> it was it was uh, a, in 2020 it was a very kind of new team like a rod i think had just been brought in i was just brought it brought in silos was brought in Peyton devada was brought in so you had you had four or five brand new guys coming into a team. Um, you know, we had our practices and then we played it and we won it. So like to think about how much of that is history repeating itself right now is kind of uncanny. So yeah, dude. That's exciting. Is dude. Win Vegas. <laughs> dude, so like I'm curious, um, like how much have you guys like this the I mean the squad that won Vegas? How much have you guys talked between Vegas and now saying, what if we had another shot at this? What if we had another shot at this? Like, do you, do you guys have that conversation at all? Oh yeah. That's come up. That's that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm, it's, it's not in our, yes. It's come up a few times. Um, but it's, I think it's, it's never one been thing, possible right? until now. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because the one Vegas after, after 2020, we didn't, we haven't had Vegas since. Yeah. So well, it's be the first well, when, time. The, the 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 possibility of you all playing together again wasn't really possible until aftershock came to fruition yes correct so yeah Aaron went to impact uh the thomas took a break uh the four of us stuck together with al uh, on the ironman and then two years later a year later silos and corey went to the Latin Saints, LJ went to X Factor, <clears throat> and then it was myself and Al. And I don't think we had anybody else really. I'm surprised Al didn't the, jump ship on the Ironman and go, go with you guys. Where? Al? Jump ship, though. What do you mean? From like leave the Ironman to join this new, new shock team. Well, him and I, we got cut. We got cut from the Ironman, and Al was at the tryout. Right. And so, as as the time of, at the time of us talking right now, Al might be on the team. He might not. I don't know yet. There's still a couple spots to be filled. Um, mm. And so, I mean, you guys have seen the roster that's been released as at this point. But you know, there's probably one or two, maybe three surprises left out there in the ether for you. Yeah, there. I mean, as of today, it's the 25th. We've got. Um... You know, and this interview is being released on Sunday. This when we're announcing Nick Sloviak playing with Aftershock. Um, but we've got uh, so 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 far it's A Rod, L J, Corey Hall, Thomas, Kim, Silos, Clay Hughes, and Nick. But you know, between now and Sunday, maybe maybe we'll hear some new announcements because that's only seven dudes. How many guys? How many do you guys want to have? Ah, uh, well, that's so I, I can't speak to that. That's between the, the top squad. squad. Jinx. Um, Zizek, like you can speak. <laughs> I don't oh. know the rules. I don't know the rules. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't, you know, I've heard, uh, you know, nine, I've heard eight, uh, ten, obviously, has been brought up. It's, it's one of those things where, like, uh, honestly, I don't think it matters all that much as long as it's not over ten. And it's one of those things, too, where, like, look, I've dealt with the last few years having more than ten guys on the team, and it sucks. Mm. It's not the way mm -hmm. to go. And, uh, you know, I've started. I've started a team a year with ten guys on my team, and definitely not ended with the same ten. So, anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, I think I think ten might be a, a smart number right away, but it all depends on on the feeling that the Todds have with the the current guys that are available and and how uh, what the team needs. And I guess we just gotta wait and see. You guys gonna wear? Blue or green? Blue. Blue. That's the Aftershock way. It is. It is the way. Are you guys going to shoot uh, SFL autocockers? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's the way to do it, too. Um, I don't know. I mean, outside of... I wonder how many guys on the team could actually shoot one. I know LJ has. Um, new. We'll be using mechanical DSR pluses from Dai precision mechanical yeah well you're gonna use mechanic i mean why, if i'm gonna use an sml auto cocker i'm gonna use it in a 10-man mechanical setting true if i'm playing in the nxl i did man i'll tell you what 
I almost did use an SFL and I'm, I'm kicking myself that I didn't in a pro PSP match at the beginning of 2015. Shut up. You shut up. Let me ask you this. Yes. M3 or DSR? Uh, I'm an M3 guy. I like the M3. I like, like the ultra light frame. I like, yeah, just, I mean, I the shot, I mean, outside of the sound, uh, the audible difference between that and the DSR Plus with the Iron Man kit, like, dude, they all shoot the same. Just the, just the feel, the ergonomics of it, my hands. I like it a lot. I, I feel like, what, you're a DSR Plus kind of guy? Dude, it has the long, soft shot. You know, yeah, it's well, you know. Uh, I I don't have anything bad to say about the marker. I just I have a choice, and I, I need you to agree. Plus, no, okay. Yeah. So so if you were to choose, you know, go to Planet Eclipse, what which platform would you choose? Uh, I currently use an M one seventy mechanical. Okay, but if I was playing X ball, I would go with the CS three. Right. With planner. And, and I would take the LV. I always like, I just kind of like the, the LV Small. platform, the ego. Yeah. It just, it's just the way the gun shot and the way it you're felt. Talking about, it. You're talking about the poppet, the poppet valve gun. Yeah. The spider. Dude, that, that is a, that's an interesting choice for you. Like I feel that's like just, you would have been full valve. No, that's just the way, the way it went. Like me coming up from using, I used a, Jeez, I used an autococker, and then from the autococker, I went to the original Matrix. From the original Matrix, I got an 05 uh, SFT shock deck on, uh, shocker, and then it was die Matrix for a long time. There was a there was a shock tech intimidator in there at one point, but it didn't really ever work for me. And then it was die, and then it was Planet Eclipse, and then it was Lux, and then it was Planet Eclipse, Planet Eclipse, Planet Eclipse, and then die. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Jack Wood gave me when we won as Aftershock in 2011 that year Jack Wood gave me like a, a prototype version of this Ego 11 that just shot phenomenal and after that point I just continued to use the Ego LV platform uh, hmm. and I really enjoyed it so like you know if you and this is you know to Eclipse's credit and this is not nothing against no, nothing to downplay Die Die's markers are phenomenal and you should choose that but like, if you you have to make a choice between you know a company that offers two exceptionally well platforms, it's about what you feel is most comfortable in your hands. And obviously, you can get nitpicky on the shot and how it relates to what you shot as you shot a gun ten years ago. But like, True. it's just you know the M3 in my hands feels more like the DM6 and DM7 I used when I was you know on aftershock. We get it. Yeah. And I I just it's just so easy for me to pick up and shoot and use. And that's not to say the DSR is it. But you know, different did, strokes, different folks. That's right. I did play. I did play with a twister, <clears throat> first uh, real custom, outside of the tricks, but the first twister die marker ever uh, this past weekend, and it shot phenomenally. Like it shot really, really well. That's a DSR. DSR plus um, from Committed Paintball T two over there, and then they partnered up with Buddy to do the bodies and the internals with the free flow stuff. And uh, yeah, shoot, that gun shoots amazing. It shoots great. Yeah. But you know, I don't let Thomas use my my Icon M3 Plus, so I was like, oh, right, I'll get it back. Is there going to be a new gun, a, a new die yeah. gun for uh, for Vegas? Ooh, I don't know. I've seen I've seen things. I've talked to people. Uh, there will be, and it's I mean, for sure, there's always going to be a new marker coming out. But yeah. um, yes, there will be a new marker. Will it be out for Vegas? I, uh, I couldn't answer that question. You could. Maybe, maybe. You I could. don't know. I couldn't because I don't have the answer. Oh. Couldn't tell you. But it's being worked on. So all you people out there interested, yes, something new is coming. Um, what it is? Obviously, it's the new dam. Obviously. Well. Nicholas, I'm yes. super excited for you, man. It, I'm, I'm excited for Aftershock coming back and being a thing. And I'm excited about the squad because that squad, that exact squad has won a tournament 
just four short years ago. So I thank you for your time here. Is there anything that you'd like to part with for the paintball community? Yeah, I'd like to give a uh, shout out to Chris and Dave and Rhonda for uh, giving me a job at Dive Paintball and believing me, believing in me. Uh, shout out to Joe and Tony from Marvel Paintball. Um, um, and and just uh, you know, stay tuned to everything that's going on with Aftershock. We uh, definitely appreciate your support. Shout out to Dylan who filmed it uh, and all the hard work he's been putting off, putting hard work he's been putting in to creating these series for us, uh, for Di and myself personally, just kind of telling the story and um, yeah, and everyone else out there. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you, Isaac, for having a really nice camera and a cool backdrop and a purple light and an avococker and a bookshelf. My pleasure. Do you are the there light. any beard products that you use that you'd like to shout out? Beard products? Uh, I do use Brute, you know, Blake Yarber stuff. Hey. So I appreciate Blake and Lauren. I wish them the best uh because they're expecting a baby uh here in the next I think that like the week, the first week of March, so like during the, the Vegas event. So, uh, thanks, guys. Cool. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Di. Thank you, Todd Adamson. Todd Martinez, welcome back. <laughs> Anything else? Uh...